Welcome to part two of our Source One five inch build. If this is your first time on this channel, I'm Max, this is Akela, and uh, you probably wanna go back one video, which is our premiere video on this channel where we start this build. Um, we're gonna pick up today where we left off uh, because the video was just, the day was just getting too long. It's a lot of technical details to go over. So this is part two. Um, if you want to win this quad, go to the first video and we talk about how you can win this quad there. We're going to be giving it away to one of our subscribers and uh, yeah, I think it's going to make someone really happy. Yeah. Okay, on with the show. Okay, so one of the things that we messed up was not putting this on. This is the cap that came with the Mamba stack. I bought a bigger cap. We're gonna go with the smaller one just to see if it works. The way that you tell which is positive and which is negative on a cap um, is this line here, this bar of color, that signifies negative. Yeah. Um, if you put it on backwards, which I have, this thing explodes out the back and makes a huge popping noise. Like it's terrifying. It's not what we want. Not what we want. <laughs> not what you want. Not what anybody wants. Off you go, off you go. So these caps come with like a super gnarly long. Unnecessarily. So. Unnecessarily long cap. Um, you want it to be as short as possible to reduce the noise. So we're going to kind of come out. So I like to come out and then do a nice corner. And then on the same side, now we're on the positive side. Right about there, nice corner. And then you kind of come in. So then you measure them out. That all looks like it'll work to me. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut these off like this. Okay, those are gonna go like that. I'll probably go like this and then just bend them down after. Like I usually install them just a little bit high and then you just kind of bend them into place. So for these, to put a cap on, the easiest way that I figured out is that I just put a, like a, a new blob of solder on. Just right on top? Right on top, that binds enough. And then I just put it on top of there. And make sure, again, negative to negative. And we're just gonna go plop that on there. Just like that. Let it cool before you do the next one. And then this one I'm gonna use, to, I'm gonna actually push it down. Cap is on. Clean. So that's the cap on, it's fairly clean. And then and then once it's on, like I said, you can kind of just bend it down. Yeah, bend it into position. Bend it, it into position. They're a lot stronger than you think too. Way stronger. Next. Okay, we were working on the VTX. Yeah. So on this VTX. We need everything except for. So we're gonna take the wires out we don't need. So, so we don't need the orange wire because that the third wire up is the, the orange. Ground. That's the five volt out. So that's to power a camera if you wanted to. No. So in order to get these these out, you can flip this little tab up like that. I don't know how well the camera up above me is going to know. And then you just pull it. You could cut it too. So we don't need that. We should end up with four wires, right? So white is smart audio. Uh, right there. Yellow is video, black is ground, and red is power. Easy. Simple as that. So we're going power, which is nine volt for our particular VTX, but there is five volt there. But for us, we want nine volt, ground, smart audio, which is TX3, and video. And video. So, a little tin action. Tin, tin, Tin. Okay, so the wires are tinned, and now we're going to tin all of our uh, motor pads. So we have yellow, white, black, red. So now that I've got that side done, I'm gonna do them from the underneath just because it'll look cleaner. So the move for me is I'm gonna pop this off. We can actually disconnect this for now. It'll just make it easier for our system and then go like that. I tinned from the top but now if you look like it's not perfect from the bottom so we're gonna add a little bit more solder like so 
a little bit of solder there, a little bit of solder there, a little bit of solder there. Oh, that pad bridged. See the, oh, yeah. We don't want that. That looks better. So all I did was to clean that off is I cleaned so I had no solder on my tip and then you scrape and the solder gets sucked onto the metal. Okay, so according to this, closest to the computer, or closest to, the, it says computer, but closest to the USB is video wire. There it is. Okay. Second closest to the compute to the USB is ground. That's all pretty straightforward, right? Okay, ground. Nice. Next one after ground is smart audio, which is white. A little case of the shakes. A little bit. I like to like stabilize my fingers off like a standoff or something. Okay, white. And then closest to the USB is video, which is yellow. Okay. There we go. That's it. So we want it that way. And then it'll just be nice and clean on the inside. Just like that. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. okay. And then everything looks good on the top of there. Okay, next step. Let's do the camera, I think, right? Yeah. We're gonna use two um, 3D printed little mounts for yeah. the camera because ours is the Rattel. So can you dig the Rattel out, the cable out? And then all cameras, well, you get that done. Um, all cameras, they come with a joystick. And this is so that when you, if you were to plug this into the back of your camera and push on the Caddx anyways, you push, push it and it gives you a menu and you can change the saturation of your camera, the sharpness, the white balance. I think you, there's a whole bunch of, yeah. yeah, you can get into kind of the back end settings of the camera, things that you wouldn't be able to change um, without this. Obviously, if you have a pair of like fat sharks, you can just change the contrast and the brightness, like kind of like basically. But if you really want to get into the settings, you can push this. I think especially if you wanted to use this Caddx as a nighttime camera, you kind of set it up for black and white. You definitely and then that. And then crank, crank it. This is MMCX to SMA. It's the pigtail that you would use. Uh, it's great and it works fine, but I want to use this 3D print on the back and this is a bit thicker. So we're going to swap that print out and we're going to use one of these guys which is, is this MMCX? Yeah. Which is longer, I'll show you here. So if you look at that, this is what I was saying about it. Oh yeah. It's and so it just fits through the print. The other one won't fit through the print. So we are going to put this guy through here. We got the camera in there. Okay, camera's in, great. So where is the hardware for that bad boy? Okay, so this gives you a bunch of extra. So that's gonna go in there. And then on our pinout, we've got, I'm gonna to point to it so I can have a visual. We've got the square is five volt. Five volt ground camera. So we're gonna go yellow, black, red. Just like it comes out of the camera actually. So that's cool. Ideal. Yeah, so we don't, I'm gonna twist this to make it nice and tight. And then that's probably enough like that, right? We crank this back. We don't want too much. Have enough so you can crank it down to the, the 50, yeah. the 50 degree camera <laughs> slope and just go shred. And then while I'm at it, I'll take this off. I'm gonna tin these pads up. So it's camera is right here. Hold on. So it goes camera, ground, five volt. So camera, ground, that's good, five volt. So closest to the corner is five volt, in. And then right beside it, that should be ground. That can be, so see how that's a little bit long? Yeah, Step So that's, that off. That's the, that's the difference. And then you don't want to do it right over top of your thing, but like, yeah, you don't need hardly anything. 
And it just makes it so much cleaner. You don't have all these bare wires just hanging out. Ground. And then camera. There you go. So if I was teaching people, which I guess, like I said, we're kind of trying to do, um, you should check for continuity. Like if you're trying yeah, like to- Like every you, step. Like every step of the way. So in theory, we should have checked after the VTX, but we didn't. If you're extra worried, it's definitely a good thing to do. Well, it's, if you short something, right? Like let's say, let's say we connected like a black and a red on the VTX. Yeah. And then let's say we installed the camera and then we installed our receiver. So I have no idea what's going on. And then on. all of a sudden you get a short, you have no idea where it came from. But if you only install the VTX and you pull a yeah, short, you can... now you know. So continuity. Second time round. Continuity. Do we have it? Hey, and then if we go the other way, it beeps because the capacitor, right? Yeah. And then when we go back, it'll beep again it's a capacitor and then it stops if it beeps and stops you're good if it beeps and keeps on beeping you're not good don't don't plug it in so we don't have continuity or we do have continuity we don't have continuity i don't know there's no short we're good we're good you always have to have an antenna connected to your vtx before you turn it on so we're just going to go like this and we have an antenna so camera's connected vtx is connected so here's the battery. You're gonna plug it in. If you plug it in and break it, then it's your fault, right? Yep, there you go. I'll grab my fat shark. Rule number one, let in, somebody else do it for you. In theory, we should be able to see through the camera. Will it work, man? Will it work? Did you plug it, did you turn it on? Oh, you didn't. Nah. Come on, baby. I don't see any I don't see any colors. I don't see any LEDs. Oh, that's why. We're using the smoke stopper. Right. Dude, did we get a dead VTX? Hmm. Just worried that like all of a sudden I looked and this black and red yeah. is saying current RX6, which doesn't make sense for, it might be crossed over. I hope we didn't just ruin our stack that way. Okay, we had to take a minute there and figure out why we weren't getting any power. We thought the VTX wasn't getting power, but then we realized the- The whole, the whole stack and everything. Yeah, the flight controller, flight controller wasn't getting power. We knew the ESC was good, because yeah. we, we had checked it. Um, two things that happened there. One, I forgot to mention this, and we've done it a couple times where I've done builds with you, and I just get overzealous, and it can totally bite you in the ass, is that you absolutely must plug in your flight controller before soldering anything to it into USB and make sure that it powers up and that it connects to beta flight. Yeah. Because if you solder anything, some companies will believe you, especially if you know what you're doing and you, you know, Should whatever. Explain. But the reality is, is that if you do that and you've soldered something, they, they don't have any liability. Yeah. Here. If it's dead on arrival, meaning you haven't soldered anything and it doesn't work, they'll always refund it. Uh, so that's the first step. And then two, right here, if you take this, cable and you reverse it which is what i had this cable this part was connected to the esc the other end of the esc was plugged into here and the red and black wires were over here and if you look close it says ground vcc there which means black and red vcc is is uh unfiltered power coming from the battery so we had it op opposite which luckily it didn't smoke anything out we did check for continuity so we know it wasn't shorting anything but it just didn't work so we swapped this wire around and now we're getting power okay go for it those are good lights <laughs> do we get lights on it we got lights, lights sweet lights. okay i gotta find the channel a1 hey oh <laughs> all right man we're in business. We're getting, we're getting some. Where are we at, man? What's well, the next step? What else do, do we crossfire. need? Crossfire. Is that all we need? Crossfire and we're done. Yeah. So we talked about it in the beginning of the video, but we'll talk about it again. We are going to hook up this thing to Crossfire because that's the two, the protocol that we run. Um, if you happen to be the winner and you want an FR Sky receiver, we can do that too. If you have a different radio than that, you're out of luck. 
<laughs> out of luck. We don't have any other receivers because those are the only two protocols we use. We don't want this antenna. My long spiel is that it's just, it's inferior to this. Look at the build quality between the two. You can crash this, so many times with that one and it's good. This is inside of here. It's no different other than, like you said, there's like this metal sheath and they just like, they bounce back. Like they're just, they're just Intense. good. You can cut them and they're still gonna go. Yeah, like, like I've ripped them completely to so they're bare and then just put another piece of uh, tubing, like or shrink wrap. shrink wrap on it and it works great so we're gonna replace that so you can mount an antenna an immortal t antenna you can mount it on an arm like this um i personally used to always mount them on the back but since we've started flying like longer and longer it actually makes more sense to put it on the front and the reason being is that as you're flying away the antenna is further away from you but when you turn towards yourself, it'll be pointing to you. So it's always when you turn that you hit the null spots. So I think that's like I think, really important thing I think, to mention. Too. I think mounting it on the front arm is, especially if you're planning on far, flying any sort of distance, I think that's the move. It's, it's put on the front. I have first-handedly experienced it. Yeah. Crapping out just because of doing that. Of turning. Going out and as soon as you turn around, just fall. Yeah, so you're like perfect, perfect, perfect. And then all of a sudden it gets weird. So when you stick this on, it's a super tiny connection. And then it just clips on. It's almost like a friction fit. And then once this is on, it comes with a piece of um, shrink wrap, which you don't need this whole piece. So you can actually cut it down. But yeah, you just put this shrink wrap, this tube on it and then you shrink wrap that and it actually holds it across. So you don't want, you don't want it like that. You don't want to shrink like that. You don't get a lot of strength that way. You want it to run across the board, but just make sure you leave this button. This guy right- Cover your tether button. This, your, your bind, bind button. button. Yeah, that's your bind button. So you don't want to cover that. You just want to kind of run diagonally across and then put your shrink wrap on and then that'll hold it nice and tight. We need a pin out, which this doesn't come with a pin out, does it? Uh, no, you got to look it up. You got to look it up. So, just type in uh, literally pin out. RX pin out. Pin out should do it. Google images. And there it is. The ground, the five volt, the channel one, channel two, and that's all we're that's interested all we in. And so channel one is going to be RX and channel two is going to be TX, I believe. Ground, five volt, white, yellow channel one equals yellow channel two white channel two I mean, equals green, but, but it would be our white yeah so your tx on the crossfire goes to your rx on the flight controller exactly your rx on the crossfire goes on to your yeah which TX on the which you think they should just make it so that it's like so, yeah. it connects like it makes sense when you know it but it's like totally counterintuitive when you don't know it yeah. All right, this is like the micro soldering action. This is the one I did with a $20 Amazon solder. Dude. Don't use a $20 Amazon solder. And then Amazon you started solder. having fail saves right after, which I don't think they were related, but this is even kind of a big tip for this, but. Two, three, four. Next one's five volt. I like to mount my you could technically mount your Nano right here. I've heard from like multiple places though, the farther away the better. From the VTX? Yeah. Oh, great. So. I've always just mounted it behind the camera because it's nice and tiny. Like, I don't know if it matters anymore, but like I've read some old, like old FPV stuff where they're like, oh, you gotta keep them at the farthest ends of each other hmm. for better range with your, with both. Okay. That I don't know. Seems, seems logical. Logical to me. <laughs> so we're gonna keep, no evidence. we're gonna <laughs> keep these wires then pretty long. I'm gonna tin these. You're good to go. Good to go. There you go. Hey, -o. we are almost there. Okay, we'll tin these pads or these wires. Tin, 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 tin. So that means our TX, which is channel one, which is yellow, which is going needs, to our RX, right? Needs to go to the RX. And RX is farthest away from me on this pad, so that's yellow. When you do this like late at night, like when you get to like the three o'clock in the morning, man, dude. So it's getting to you? You start being like, what was I saying? Like, okay, here we go. 
home stretch, baby. Yellow. So we know the next one's white. Yep. That's an easy one. Okay, and then got the five volt. Five volt. Oh, that one didn't go in. Five volt and ground. Okay, man. That's it for soldering. So now let's clean this bad boy up a little bit. This is gonna go like this. I'm so glad we didn't fry our flight controller in our first build. <laughs> so that goes into there, that goes into there. And now this guy. Okay, so with this, um, I use- With the nano? I use double-sided tape with the nano. This guy comes through here and connects right here. You need to have access to that bind button, so that'll be easy access right like that. This guy goes like that. Now, before we seal this all up, continuity. Now that we've added the next thing. So you can do that. I'm gonna put some of these tools away. Good to go. Plug this bad boy in. Okay, ready? Ready. Here we go. Hey, we got power. Are we hooked up? Yeah. Right? Yeah, so you can, you can assemble this whole thing together. All right, so that wraps up our build. Um, if you watched our part one, you can go back to that video, go comment on it, subscribe to us, share it. If you comment on that video, you have a chance to win this quad. We're gonna give it away to one of our first thousand subscribers. Tune in next week and we'll be tuning this and actually flying it so you get to see what, um, what we got going here. Yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you haven't done so already, and if you've made it already to this, the end of this video and you've watched like everything that we've done, Thank you for sticking it out with us because it's yeah. probably quite a long video. It's probably very long. Yeah, so great. Yeah. See, ya. See you next week. Bye.